Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about the pathway to laser guided bomb and how a seeker functions and how it actually guides to the target. As my source, um, I'm mainly going to rely on the avionics and non-nuclear weapons delivery flight manual for the Hellenic Air Force series F-16 C slash D block 15 airplane from the 16th June 1997. Um, I got this manual on a Google search. I'm actually not sure if it's fully declassified or not. But, well, I'm not going to show any more parts of that manual than the cover page. Um, you can find the manual yourself when you Google for it. So, Let's get started. Let's first of all just draw something that resembles a bomb, a laser guided bomb. We first of all have the bomb body where all the spicy stuff, the explosives, are. All right, let's, let's use this color for, for the. Yeah, no, this color. <laughs> I can't decide. God dang it. And then we have the rear section that is pretty much just screwed onto the back of the body. And in that rear section, we have folding fins that um, extend when the bomb gets released. You all probably know how a paveway bomb looks like, otherwise you probably wouldn't have clicked on this video, so I'm not going to make 100% accurate drawings of the thing. Uh, this is really just to explain how the seeker and everything else functions. So yeah, this is the rear section. Wait, wait, wait you know what? Let me make the things that are added onto the bomb to make it guided. Make them green. Yes. Much better. Okay. And then the nose is another part. Wait, nope. Black outline is another part which screws into the nose of a basic Mark 80 series unguided bomb. The pathway series is modular in case you didn't know that. And these are just add-on kits that you put onto bombs to make them guided. Uh, and this part is a bunch of fins, four fins in total, two like this, and then two like this. These fins can rotate to steer the bomb. And then in front of that, we have our, uh, let me use this. So we just a nose cone. And on that nose cone is a weird gimbal. <laughs> which looks kind of like this. It's it's the seeker element that sits on a on a moving disc and this whole assembly is centered by the aerodynamic force when the bomb falls through the air. It's this weird little thing that you see at the nose of the pathway series when you take a pic look at, uh, at a picture of them. And this is really just so that the seeker stays in line with um, the, the, um, yeah, the, the wind direction. So when the, when the, when the body of the bomb 
um, falls at a slight angle because it just did a steering maneuver, this whole assembly will look in this direction because it will then point into the wind. In this assembly is the main part of the of the seeker. So here yeah, we have this thing like this, and let's draw what's inside of this magic box. So Yeah, I'm, I'm just you drawing this thin part where the seeker is. This is really just a box fin. So at the front, we got us a lens. No, oh, like a whole lens system. This lens system has the job of focusing a reflected laser beam. Let's say we have a laser beam that comes from down below uh, of putting it through this lens system and then focusing it on a on a disc. Yes, just like the Sidewinder, we too have a disc. But the disc is the sensor. The um, it, is, it is not there to regulate the signal. So here, our sensor. This is a side-on view. To fully understand how the pathway works, we need to look at that disk from the top. Because this disk is not a single sensor, it is a collection out of four sensing elements. like this like a pie chart this is how this disc looks from the front we have oh wait no uh, we have four sensing elements um, wait no wrong color one, two, three, and four. Now when the laser spot gets focused on one of the sensing elements, let's say the laser spot is uh, up here. Then number two gets laser energy and tells the fins of the bombs of the bomb, which compared to the disc, uh, uh, I should have maybe let me do this actually. Cut, cut it out and move it a bit. So now uh, that's our disc. And when we now take a look at the guiding fins that are like mounted compared to the disc roughly wait nope they are more like this yeah Or are they in line? No, I think they are in a 45 degree angle to the sensors. That, that makes more sense to me. So, kind of like this. So these are, our, these are our four fins. And this is our sensor. When element two gets hit by the focused laser beam that comes from the target when the targeter or the, when the laser designator points the laser at it, 
the laser beam reflects kind of like a laser pointer and a cat, right? It, 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 it works very similarly. Um, then on, on section number two, um, these two fins here are going to rotate so that the bomb moves in a direction that our laser spot moves towards the center. Well, it won't move like this towards the center. It will move more like this towards the center because it is located on this spot on the, on the disc. Now the thing is, the bomb actually doesn't know where exactly this little spot on the disc is. It just knows it is on section two or one or three or four. Meaning that the way the bomb guides is it deflects those two fins to a hundred percent. And as soon as the laser spot moved to a different sections, section, these fins stop giving 100% guidance. Um, because then, let's say um, our laser spot moved now to here. And uh, so it, it guided here. Then these two fins here, give 100% deflection so that the laser spot moves in this direction. And then it, it, it turns into the other direction. So that the, that this laser spot constantly dances around each section and the bomb simply tries to pull it in the middle by giving 100% guiding inputs um, against the movement uh, of that laser spot. This entire system is called bang, bang guidance because it bangs, well, it, 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 it pushes the fins 100%, 0%, 100%, 0%. It is not proportional that can, where it has a control over how much the fin is angled depending on where the laser spot is. This is a very simple system. It can either do 100% deflection or 0% deflection. Now, to increase accuracy, because here we only have movement along two axes, the rear fins of the paveway are slightly angled so that the bump does a very slow rotation. Um, wait, I need to hold the pen so that the bomb does a slow rotation along its axis. This slightly improves the precision because now the bomb, um, yeah, the, the, the laser spot gets more incentivized to also hit the other spots because at some point it, um, it is in an equilibrium between just two points so that the bomb will only do this motion. But, but because with the um, s slow rotation, the bomb, the, the laser spot will make kind of like this motion, roughly like this. So it's, uh, it, 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 it just increases the precision of the weapon. In the end, when the bomb is falling, its flight path is going to look uh, roughly like, like this. So first of all, it has its ballistic trajectory where it just falls. And as soon as the laser spot enters the window of our seeker, I need more space actually. <laughs> the bomb starts doing its dance. So it does this snake-like motion until it hits the target. 
And because the system is so incredibly simple and because the system um, can only determine between 100% and 0% deflection, it is not very efficient. So the range of the pathway series is reduced compared to more advanced guided bombs. However, the unit cost of a single pathway is pretty low. Um, even during its initial um, use a single pathway had a unit cost of about thirty thousand US dollars. Um, compared to most targets that they are used against, this is very cheap. And I think today, um, with mass production, it's possible to push the price of the pathway down to ten to maybe even five thousand um, dollars, because it is such a simple system. When Tex Instrument, this is the company that made the Payfray series initially during the Vietnam War, got the contract to build these bombs, they had a budget of about 1 million US dollars to make them. And they managed to go extremely under budget with just $800,000 to fund the entire development of the pathway, which is pretty rare in military um, contracts. So yeah, this is how the Paveway 2 series of laser-guided bombs works. It's a very simple system. It is a very robust system um, that just perfectly works where as long as the um, seeker can see the laser spot. And um, yeah, it, it, it showed how much success it has. Now you probably are asking, but how does the bomb know if the laser spot that I'm aiming at is the one that is, that is for me? Well, that's where you have laser codes. Uh, a laser code is just a four digit code that is programmed into the seeker of the bomb. And um, the laser of the um, designating aircraft, let's say there's, or the, the designating unit, let's say there's like a laser designator here. That points, that points it out. Um, they can, according to the codes, let the laser flash in a specific pattern. So um, that two bombs with different codes don't hit the same laser spot. Um, this is like la laser encoding. And so you can have multiple bombs on multiple targets in the same general area. The only issue is that for each bomb you need your own laser designator and that each bomb needs to have the code set before um, the mission because these are set using a tool in the seeker head. Uh, you can't actually change the laser code mid-flight. This only was added with the later Paveway 3 series, but the Paveway 3 also drastically changed how um, the seeker functions. The seeker of the Paveway 3 is much closer to how the seeker of the Aimline Sidewinder works. Um, here a video, um, just click on the info card for my Sidewinder video. And um, the Payfield 3 also in the later models added an inertial navigation system to further improve its accuracy against static targets. Anyway, uh, I hope you liked my video and we we'll see us in the next one when I explain the next weapon system or maybe even some gameplay. I don't know yet. Um, <laughs> it depends on my mood, really. So yeah, have a great one. Bye-bye, everybody.